Hey CMS staff, um, this is going to be one of the first PD videos in terms of being directly targeted towards um, the first step that we're trying to take in terms of making sure every single staff has uh, published courses on Canvas and that you're posting your choice boards at least to those courses in a way that's easy for students to see. I'm going to show you one route of how to do that. This is not the only way to do that, um, but kind of the idea here in terms of trying to triage and figure out um, just the most simple and direct ways um, and at the same time kind of building um, a sustainable structure in terms of um, usage and utilizing Canvas. Um, this is just going to be one route I'm going to show of how to get there. A couple of pieces of advice before we get started on this. Um, if you find that you only need to, you know, one thing out of here and I'm going too slow for you and you have a bunch of information, feel free to scrub along the bottom to find, um, you know, the step that you need. The other thing that I always tell students when they're watching videos for instruction, and I use this um, strategy myself because I most new things that I learned in my life I'm using video instruction for, um, is watch, pause, do. That means if I do something, like right now I'm on Hello ID, so you would pause the video and go to Hello ID, and then come back and go from there. Instead of trying to watch the whole thing and then go repeat, watch a little bit until there's an actionable item, pause, go do it, and then come back and keep going. Also, the bottom corner in the video here, um, there should be a sprocket on the video player if you're watching on YouTube, and you should be able to slow down or speed up the video to match the pace and cadence that works best for you. I'm going to kind of go as quick as I can to respect people's time, but if you need to slow it down, by all means, use that slow down feature. So we're going to start on Hello ID, and we're going to use two tools out of Hello ID. Hello ID is one of our toolboxes here. We're going to use Canvas, which is going to be our tool for learning management system. We think about Canvas as kind of a home base for students, that um, it's a place you want students to go on a daily basis to figure out what to do. They might be using other tools from Canvas. Um, not everything you do can be embedded in Canvas, but Canvas is where you have your directions as your point of contact with your students. It's like them walking into your class every single day. And the other thing we're going to use is Office 365, and that's going to help us store the choice board that you created and find a way to share that with students. So let's start on Canvas. So I'm going to assume that um, building this video from the perspective of you don't have a published Canvas course, right? So you've never published your Canvas course, students don't know how to get it. Um, if right here, we're going to go to courses and we're going to hit all courses. Now we're on Canvas, we're going to all our courses and we can see these are our current courses that we currently teach. If there's a star next to it, it will show up on your dashboard when you click dashboard. Um, right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to build a course that is in an unpublished state. Maybe you've never published your course. I have to go publish courses um, minimum four times a year because I teach quarter-long courses. Um, it's really super, super easy once you learn how to copy content, and we'll get to that later on, way down the road. Um, but right now, I can see I have my Term 3, Foundations of Tech class. That would be all finished off and published. It's what I use every single day. But here's my Term 4 class, and it's totally unpublished, so I'm going to use that. So I start it. Um, so for you, just go through and make sure that there are stars next to the courses that you currently teach right now. And then we're going to go back to your dashboard. So I'm just showing you my future course just to show you an example of what an unpublished course looks like. Um, but for you, if you have a current course that's unpublished, it'll look the same. So I'm going into Foundations of Technology, and there's a bunch of different ways. So our thing about our goal right now is to get your choice board on the home page of your Canvas course to make sure students and parents can access it easily. A lot of different ways to do that. I'm going to show you one way that I think is maybe the first step in developing a more sustainable way to engage with Canvas in the long term, but that's just me. Um, so if you want to follow these directions, great. Or if you want to figure out a different route that works for you, awesome. That also works. But here's one route to do this. First thing we're going to do is when we're on home, we're going to click choose home page. And on choose home page, I'm going to hit course modules for the, for the home page. And I'm going to save that. So. Now I have course modules saved. That means every time someone clicks home, they're going to go to the modules page. Well, we need to go build a module first. So now we're going to click modules. Modules are just groupings of content, all organized into one page. So we're going to start with our first grouping of content and group, make a group of choice boards. So we're going to hit module and we're going to call it choice boards. And we're going to add that module. Now we need to start adding content to that module. So in order to do that, First, we're going to make sure we publish the module by clicking the Publish button. That makes it visible to students and parents. And then you're going to hit the Plus button. The Plus button allows us to add content. You can add all sorts of different types of content to a module, assignments, quizzes, files, pages, whatever. In this case, the way I'm just going to show you how to do it for this one, we're actually going to do external URL for what it's worth. We're going to do external URL. And I'm going to call this the page name Choice Board. March 31st. And the URL, which is just a link, I need a link to my choice board for March 31st. So we got to get our other tool out, 
Office 365. So back to Hello ID, Office 365, into Office 365, and then we're going to go to OneDrive. That's going to be our tool for this. So when we get into OneDrive, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to upload your choice board. And if you already have your choice board in your OneDrive, awesome. You can just bear with me for a minute. But right now we're going to upload it. Um, right now my files are displaying and look super, super weird. I don't like this look at all. So I'm going to go back and grid. Instead of grid, I'm going to do a drop down and hit list. Um, I like to be able to see details on my files and organize them in, in that um, structure. And then I also have my things sorted as newer to older here under modified when it goes to list. So it just does folders first and then it'll get into files. So I can see that I have my choice board for March 31st right here. If I didn't have it, if it wasn't there yet, you'd hit upload, files, go to the location on your computer where you have saved your choice board, wherever that is. For me, I saved it to my downloads folder, but I mean, you might save it somewhere else. You gotta go find it. And then upload that choice board. So you just double click or, or single click and then hit open to upload and you're good to go. So now I have my choice board. Here's what I'm gonna do next. I need to make a shareable link. I wanna share it. There's a couple different buttons I can use to share it, but here's one route. I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna hit copy link. Now, I want everybody to be able to see this choice bar, not just people with a student with a Snohomish School District account, because I wanna see I want parents to be able to see it if they click on it too. So what I'm gonna do is right here, I'm gonna choose my permissions. I'm gonna click, instead of people in Snohomish School District with a link, anyone with a link. And we can see there's an expiration date in this link, but that's not till next year. Hopefully this whole thing blows over by then. So. We're going to apply. I'm going to now let anyone with a link, and I'm going to copy. So I have a link to the document copied. Here's the advantage of that. If I just upload the file and send it out and then realize I made a mistake, well, now i got to re-upload the file. i got to save it and send a new version. Save it, send a new and try to tell those people, hey, I made a mistake. Don't do that. This is a live link to the file. That means any changes, if I just click this and open it up, any changes I make, to this file, as long as I'm going through OneDrive and as long as I'm opening it up, staying in my web browser, now in Word Online, any changes I make, any last minute changes I make, these will be reflected automatically for anybody with a link. So if I delete, if someone with a link clicks it and looks at it right now, and I delete this on their screen, this word would delete. It's a live file. Link sharing is a really good way to go about having things so you don't have to send multiple copies of things back and forth. You just share the link and then all changes are actually reflected based on anyone just clicking that link. So I digress. Back to, we got our link copied, right? So we went to copy link and we changed our permissions, made sure that anyone with a link can view it. We applied it, we copied it, we're good. Now we're gonna go back to Canvas where we have our URL, control V, use key commands, control V like Velcro to paste and then I would click load in a new tab. That'll make a new tab pop up when the person clicks it. And then add item. Choice board, March 31st. So when someone clicks it, it will theoretically open up in a new tab. Oh, this site was open a new browser window. I have my pop-up blocker here. I gotta hit all allow pop-ups. So I'm gonna hit open in a new window. And then that is gonna show that choice board. And I'll go back to it in just a second, just a second when it loads. I'm going to show you another feature that's really important just to double check your work. This is just like, you know, math teachers do this all the time. We just check our work. Down here under settings, which you can barely see. I know my video is kind of cutting it off. It's a last choice along this column here. Under settings, on your assignment, you can, on here, you can click student view. Now here's what's going to be interesting. I can already predict what's going to happen here, I believe. My course is unpublished. So actually what I wish would have happened is it would have said an error because I haven't published the course. But... I can also see that that choice board isn't there. So there's something funky going on here. So right here on the side, which is a little bit cut off, I'm gonna hit leave student view, and I'm gonna go back and correct my mistakes. Oh, well my link wasn't published, so now I gotta click publish. I also, the course status is not published, so I need to publish the course. So now, when I have my course published, if I go down and hit settings, and then I'm gonna go to, and I did see there was a button there for student view on the previous page, we could use that also. I click student view, we're at the home of my course. Here's what it looks like when a student sees my course. They go here, the home page, or they go to the modules page, doesn't matter. Home, choice boards, click and toggle, choice board March 31st, 
if they click that and follow that link, this is what they will see. And if I make any changes to this on my end, when students click that link, the latest version, the latest changes will always be reflected as long as I'm using Word Online to make those changes. I'm using the version of the document that I uploaded in my OneDrive and I'm accessing it by clicking it from my OneDrive within a web browser, Word Online. So now I have a sustainable way to do that in the long term. And then as we go further, so I'm leaving student view right now, as we continue to make more choice boards or add new content, we're going to hit plus in order to just add new content. And you could use this external URL again, make a link to your next choice board, and then have your next choice board show up there. The very last thing I will add here, just to prevent confusion for students, is under settings. If you don't have a reason why student, you'd want students to be able to access something like people or pages or files, if you're not using these things, then get rid of them for students because they are only more confusing. So here's how we do it. Click and drag to move away. Um, having students ask the Office 365 button through Canvas is not amazing. Hello ID is a way better way to do that. In this case, if this is my class and the only thing I'm doing is just having a home page with choice boards that's hosted through the modules page, I'm getting rid of everything in the navigation for students because I don't want them to get distracted or confused. I want to only present things that would be the most relevant specifically for my class. So I've done that now. And what we can see is that there's a little eye with a line over it. And that means that students disabled, not visible to students. So now if we go back to that student view, now I have a super clean course set up choice board as a module, first choice board. Again, a bunch of different ways to do this. You could make a new page, make a home page. There's other ways to do this. This is not the one right way to do this task, but this is just one way that could be the basis of creating a more sustainable, um, engagement with Canvas. And by using link sharing and URLs, we're making sure that we don't have to download, delete, and re-upload things. If we make mistakes, we can all just go fix our mistakes right away. Um, and the, the document stays live over time. And so you can change um, whatever you need to do. So just a couple little tools to use. I know it's a long video. Um, hopefully you bear with me there. Feel free to reach out through email. We can set up Zoom meetings if you want to work on this um, on a more one-to-one -one basis. All right. All the best.